Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at an old FRQ question from an AP microeconomics exam. And this particular one looks at marginal analysis. I'm going to solve it step by step so you can see exactly how to get a perfect five out of five score, showing all of your work to get all of those marks. With that said, let's get into it. So let's take a look at the problem in front of us. This is again from the 2024 AP microeconomics exam of which the average score for this question was 26%. I wanna make sure that if you see a marginal analysis question in the future, you can solve it using this as a basis or an example of showing you what a perfect score would look like, explaining each question exactly how you would need to to get those full marks. So let's take a look at the problem. The table provided shows the short run production function for a low end feline, a profit maximizing firm that produces cat food. So here you have a table and the left column is the number of workers going from zero all the way to nine workers. And the column on the right is the total quantity of cat food in bags that can be produced when you have each of these numbers of workers. So obviously when there's zero workers, then you have zero units of cat food, zero bags of cat food, all the way up to when there's nine workers, you have 32 bags. And then there's all those combinations in between and it depends on the number of workers you have. So Low and Feline sells as many bags of cat food as it wants at a market price of $10 per bag and it hires as many workers as it wants at a market wage of $18. So using this information, this table up top, and this explanation, we need to answer these five questions A through E. Each of them is worth one mark, and I'm going to show you how to answer each of them fully to get that mark. So part A says, low and feline's fixed cost is $90. Calculate the average fixed cost if low and feline hires six workers, and more importantly than anything else, show your work. So let's take a look at the important information that we need to note. First off, it says that this company hires six workers. So I'm going to highlight this row right here where the workers are six and it tells me that the quantity of cat food in bags that six workers can produce is 30 units or 30 bags. And so recall that the formula for average cost or average fixed cost in this case is total fixed cost divided by the quantity of output that I have. Now, lucky for me, my fixed cost is actually given in the question. My fixed cost is $90. And my quantity is also given, but it's not given directly. It tells me that I hire six workers, but I can look at the table and see that six workers corresponds to output of 30 bags. So I'm simply going to substitute in my fixed cost and my quantity of output into this equation and solve for average fixed cost. So if I do that, I get average fixed cost is equal to $90. That's the total fixed cost divided by 30. That's my total output when I have six workers hired. And if I simplify this, then I get average fixed cost is equal to $3. And that right there is a point. Nice and easy. Just substituting it in. The hardest part is actually remembering that equation and then also inferring that the output is 30 units when you have six workers. If you showed your work like this, then you have your first point. Let's move on to part B. Part B says, assume labor is the only variable input to low and feline. Calculate the marginal cost. If low and feline increases output from 27 to 30 units, and again, show your work. So if we want to go from 27 to 30 units, it's a jump from five workers to six workers. And so I need to calculate what the marginal cost of going from five workers to six workers is. And in order to do that, I'm going to look at my marginal cost formula. In this case, it's marginal cost is equal to the change in the total variable cost divided by the change in the quantity of output. Now, sometimes you might remember marginal cost as the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity of output. However, because your fixed cost isn't going to change, it would essentially cancel out on the numerator. So I'm gonna write it as total variable cost, but if you did it as total cost in general, it would be the same answer. So use either one. I'm gonna use variable cost here because I think it might be a little bit easier to explain but both of them will work. It's just if you do total cost, your two fixed costs will cancel out, that's all. If you're not sure what your fixed cost is, well, in part A, it told us it was $90. So let's substitute in what we know. Marginal cost is equal to the change in total variable cost over the change in quantity of output. So if I plug in my known values and I get marginal cost is equal to $108 minus $90, that's my change in variable cost, divided by 30 minus 27, that's my change in quantity of output. And you might be thinking to yourself, hold up, hold up. Where did the $108 and the $90 come from? Nowhere in the question does it say anything about 108 and 90. Well, this is where your inference skills need to kick in. So the variable cost is labor. 
And we know that the cost of labor is right here. It's a wage of $18. So if I want to find the difference in the cost of labor from six workers to five workers or five to six, then I need to find the cost of five workers. And in this case, the cost of five workers would be $18 times five workers, which is 90. And the cost of six workers would be $18 times six workers, which is 108. So if I want to find the difference or the change in the total variable cost, I will just take the difference in these two costs, um, the cost for six workers and the cost for five workers. And of course, the 30 minus 27 is just looking at my um, output when I have six workers and my output when I have five workers. So if I simplify this, I'm gonna get marginal cost is equal to $18 divided by three. And then finally, simplifying it one more time, marginal cost is equal to $6. And again, what this means in words is that as I increase my quantity of bags of cat food from 27 to 30 units, so that's going from five workers to six workers, then my marginal cost for that jump is $6. And if you said all of this and you showed your work, that is your second point. Let's move on to part C. So part C says, with the hiring of which worker do diminishing marginal returns begin? Explain using numbers. So in this case, marginal returns is talking about the increase in output when you increase your labor by one unit. And I know this because the question is asking the hiring of which laborer or which worker will decrease my marginal returns. And in this case, my marginal returns is the units of cat food that I could create. So let's take a look at how much each worker adds to my total uh, output, my total number of bags of cat food I can make. So when we start with zero workers and zero bags of cat food, obviously we don't want to be at this point because there's no output. However, when I hire the first worker, I go from zero bags to five bags. This means that the first worker that I hired added five bags of cat food to total output. I would say that their marginal product was five units. Now, if I hire another person, I'm going to go from an output of five to an output of 12. And that's actually an increase of seven. So the second worker adds even more. They add seven units of output. Similarly, if I want to go find how much the third person adds, I'm just going to go from 12 units of output to 18. However, you'll notice that this means the third worker only adds six units of output. It's less than the second person added. It would actually be enough to stop right here and say, okay, well, I know diminishing returns kick in on the third worker. In fact, if I were to continue this pattern all the way down, I would see that the returns of each additional laborer keep getting smaller and smaller until eventually it becomes a negative on that ninth worker. So how do I answer this question to get full marks if I know the answer is the third worker? Well. I need to explain using numbers. So let's take a look at an example that would give you full marks for answering this particular part C. Diminishing marginal returns to labor begin with hiring the third worker. The marginal product of the first worker is five bags, and the marginal product of the second worker increases to seven bags. However, the marginal product of the third worker decreases to six bags. And again, it continues to decrease after that, but I don't really care because when the question's asking me when the diminishing marginal returns begin, that would begin with the third worker. So if you said something along these lines, and again, you included those numbers, which you see I highlighted in red, then you would get your third point. Let's take a look at part D, which I think is the part where most students would mess up. So part D says, determine the profit maximizing number of workers low and feline will hire. Explain using marginal analysis. So this requires us to see how many of these from zero to nine workers on this table in front of us, how many or what combination this company is going to choose to maximize their profits. So remember from part C, we had these values right here for marginal product of labor. I'm going to denote it as MPL or marginal product of labor. And what this means is the additional units of output that each worker can create. So again, the first worker added five total bags of output. The second worker added seven. The third worker added six and so on and so forth. But for this question, I'm not concerned with how many bags of output they're adding, but rather I'm concerned with how much revenue they're adding to the company. So this is MRP, marginal revenue product. And this is, instead of thinking of how many bags of cat food each worker makes, I'm going to think of how much revenue each worker makes for my company. And in order to calculate the revenue that each of them is making, I need to calculate how much all of those bags they're producing are worth. And I know that the market price of each bag is $10. 
So all I need to do to get the marginal revenue product is multiply the marginal product of labor, how many extra bags they're making, by the price of the bags so that it tells me how much revenue this person will bring in. So the first worker brings in five units of output or five bags of cat food at $10 each means that that first worker brings in $50 of revenue to the company. Now the second worker brings in an additional seven units of output at $10 each is $70 in revenue. Now the third worker brings in an additional six units at $10 each is $60 in revenue. And even though they bring in less revenue than the second worker did, 60 is less than 70, it still makes sense to hire them. Because remember, it costs $18 to hire each worker. So as long as the worker brings in over $18 in revenue, then it makes sense to hire them because you're making money. So $60 is more than $18, so I should definitely keep hiring. In fact, I'm going to keep hiring until the marginal revenue product is less than the wage that I have to pay for that additional worker. So again, the wage is $18. So I'm gonna keep hiring people until the person I hire brings in less revenue than $18. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If I go from worker number three to worker number four, that goes from 18 units of output to 23, which is an increase of five units, times $10 is $50. Bigger than 18, so I'm gonna keep hiring. The next worker, so going from worker number four to worker number five, brings in four additional bags of cat food, so going from 23 to 27, I'm gonna multiply that by 10 as well, and that's gonna give me $40. And again, it's still higher than 18, so I'm gonna hire another worker. And I'm going to keep doing this until you see I eventually get to worker number seven. Worker number seven increases my output from 30 to 32. I multiply that by the $10 per bag and that gives me $20. So this is getting pretty close. Worker number seven brings in $20 of revenue, but I have to pay them $18. So I only make a profit of $2. But let's take a look at what happens for worker number eight. If I go from seven to eight, then my output will increase from 32 to 33, which is an increase of one. This means that the eighth worker is going to increase my bags of food that I produce by one unit at $10 each means they increase my revenue by $10. And you might be thinking, hold up, if it costs $18 to hire them and they only bring in $10 of value, then I'm not gonna hire them. And that's exactly right. We're not gonna hire that eighth person because their marginal revenue product is less than it costs to hire them, it's less than their wage. And so if I wanna articulate my answer to properly uh, explain this using marginal analysis, then it's gonna look something like this. The profit maximizing number of workers is seven. So right off the bat, I'm gonna answer the question. The marginal revenue product, MRP, of the seventh worker is $20, and it's greater than the marginal factor cost, or the MFC, of the seventh worker, which is just their wage, and it's $18. So therefore, the hiring of the eighth worker would decrease profits because the MRP, the marginal revenue product, of the eighth worker is $10, and that's less than the marginal factor cost, or the wage, of the eighth worker, which is $18. And if you said something along these lines, explaining it using marginal analysis, then that is your fourth point. Let's take a look at part E, the final point that you can get on this question. So in the long run, a rival company, Gatto Food, increases its production from 40 to 50 units and its total cost increases from 600 to 900. Over the output range of 40 to 50 units, is Gatto Food experiencing economies of scale, diseconomies of scale, or constant returns to scale? Explain using numbers. So this one trips up a lot of students because you're not confident in the long run average cost curve. So let me remind you, the long run average cost curve looks like this. You see the Y axis has the cost per unit and the X axis has the amount of output. And so you have this first section right here where you see the slope is negative. That is the cost per unit is actually going down as output increases. And so we would say this is decreasing long run average cost. And when this occurs, we would have economies of scale. Then you'll see this middle section, which I've highlighted in yellow, and it's a perfectly horizontal line. And this means that the cost per unit is not changing at all as I increase my output. And we call this constant long run average cost. Again, a perfectly horizontal line. In our case, we would also call this constant returns to scale. 
Now we have this final section, which I highlighted in red, and you'll see that the cost per unit is actually increasing as output increases. So you see a positive slope on that line. And this means that we have an increasing long run average cost, and this is denoted as diseconomies of scale. And so the question is asking me which of these sections on the long run average cost curve is Gato Food in when they increase from 40 to 50 units. And so let's take a look at the numbers and calculate to see if they're decreasing their long run average cost, if their long run average cost is remaining constant, or if they are increasing their long run average cost. So let's take note of the numbers. We're increasing from 40 to 50 units. And when I increase from 40 to 50 units, I increase my total cost from 600 to 900 dollars so over here on the top left we're going over two cases of calculating average cost we're going to calculate the average cost when we have output of 40 and a cost of 600 and then we're going to do it again at 50 units of output and a cost of 900 and we're going to compare those two average costs is it going up is it going down or is it remaining constant so the first average cost is just average cost number one and it's total cost over output and so if we're going to look at the case of 40 units of output and $600 in cost, then I'm just going to substitute those values in. Then the first average cost is equal to $600 over 40 units of output. And then finally, average cost is equal to $15. So when Gato Food is producing 40 units of output at a cost of $600, then their average cost is $15. Cool. Let's take a look at the other case when they increase to 50 units at $900. So average cost number two is also total cost over output, but this time average cost is equal to $900 divided by 50. That's the increased cost and the increased output. So if I simplify this, then I get average cost number two is equal to $18. And if I compare my average cost from the first case and my average cost from the second case, it's very easy to see that my average cost is increasing. It increased from $15 to $18. And so if I look at my long run average cost curve in the bottom right corner, then you see that that puts me in the red section. And the red section is increasing long run average cost, and that's diseconomies of scale. So I need to explain using numbers to get those full marks. And so let's take a look at what that explanation would look like. Gato food will experience diseconomies of scale because as output increases from 40 to 50 units, long run average cost increases from $15 to $18 per unit. And again, you can see that I showed my work on the left. And if you answered something along these lines using these values, then you would find yourself your fifth and final mark. So on screen right now, you have a full solution of this problem and all five possible marks that you could have gotten. This is a classic marginal analysis question. You should feel very confident doing this before you're doing your tests on it. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did find this video helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.